Hello everyone, Mikey Dare Panginator here with another Hearts of Iron 4 Dev Diary for Man the Guns. This would be the 19th Dev Diary for Man the Guns. And this one is all about the ship designer. Pod uh, oh, we don't have Podcast, we have Archangel85. He says this is probably his favorite feature, Man the Guns. And right now it looks pretty freaking cool. So let's jump right in. Um, so, according to the dev team, it's cost us a lot to make. Sweat, tears, sanity, and in parentheses, several members of the team now understand the poi meme. As someone who has uh, frequented World of Warships since the closed beta days, I am very familiar with the poi meme. I still do not understand it, and I do not want to. So, let's continue moving on. Um, quote, the start of the... The stated goal of Man the Guns is to make the naval gameplay more involved and in adding more depth to it by adding more roles that need to be covered and giving the player new tools to fill these roles. We also wanted to make sure we had a system that could represent a wide variety of ship types with a minimum clutter. Finally, we wanted the system to be as moddable as possible. And uh, so Daniel in the stream uh, last week accidentally clicked on the naval, the, the, the screen where you could see ships so um you know where you research your bismarck class your whatever class it then said hull and looked slightly different and uh so he spoiled that which may or may not have influenced this dev diary coming out now but um, either way i'm happy to have it so uh important to note uh of course they remind us of the dev diary and i wanted to pass this on to you numbers in the gui are not completely final so uh Put down those pitchforks and uh, don't light your torches yet. We still have a lot of time until we get to try this out ourselves. Um, of course, one of the things that the dev team did do was make this as moddable as possible. So let's jump right in. First thing we see is a picture for a 1936 cruiser hull. So um, instead of researching a ship class, you will research a hull. And... Each hole will have certain numbers of modules, some fixed, some uh, variable. So, am I jumping ahead of myself? Basically, a ship hole is an empty container with no combat stats, but uh, within the game, the ones they provide in the game, they do have stats like cruising range and health points, although because of the modability of the system, they do not necessarily have to. And pretty much all the combat stats, uh, mostly everything else comes from modules so with this 1936 cruiser hull you can see it you know tells you manpower and gives you some base stats production costs and then it also looks like we have an engine nothing to see there so um here we go so like i was getting a little bit ahead of myself every hull type has a number of slots where you can fit in modules and um pretty much each hull determines what kind of modules you can fit so destroyer which they're calling which what we think of as destroyers now are going to be based off of light ship hulls. Cannot mount heavy guns or airplane launchers, but instead can mount depth charges and battleships, which are classified under heavy ship hull, can mount airplane launchers and heavy guns, but not depth charges. And uh, there are two types of slots that are fixed, and there are um, custom. So the fixed ones, those are, those are mandatory or... You shouldn't compete with other things. So, for example, all ships except submarines have an AA slot. So, you don't have to put AA on a ship. But if you do, you can only put that in that particular slot. Um, so, just looking at the screenshot of this 1936 destroyer hull. Looks like there's an engine slot, which is probably mandatory. I mean, you don't want just barges out there. Interesting strategy. Maybe you could, you know, <laughs> you're basically building some more naval forts at that point. But... Engines, uh, t torpedoes, looks like some kind of detection system, radar types, uh, gunfire control systems, I'm assuming is what the crosshair means, AA, and main battery. And then the second type are custom slots. Uh, those are what is going to give your ship the flexibility, more so than just whether or not to include AA or detection or whatnot. Um, and so the custom ones where you decide whether you want your destroyer to have more AA or more depth charges or whatnot. And uh, so higher levels of ship hulls will generally have more custom slots available. 
so you're not going to be building super carriers with your 1936 carrier holes. Although maybe you might be able to. Um, I could definitely see some of the research bonuses for like Japan got one for super heavy battleships. I could see that you know being for heavy holes, allowing you to have more slots and being able to build a Yamoto faster than other countries. But uh, moving on, so an example. Uh, let, 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 let's read what they say here. Say you play the British and have somehow ended up in a war against Germany. Submarines are raiding your convoys and you are desperate for new escorts. Using the old system, you built a bunch of destroyers at a fixed cost, maybe spent some naval XP to upgrade their ASW capabilities, and that was that. Under the new system, you take an early, read as cheap, light hull and strip out everything you don't need. That ship is going to operate in the middle of the Atlantic, far away from enemy air, and the opponent has no carriers, so it needs little, if any, AA. The enemy surface fleet hasn't shown itself in years, so you can skip out on the gun battery and torpedo armament to cut down cost. You also go with the most basic set of engines to keep the ship as cheap as possible. It doesn't have to be fast to catch a submarine. Instead, you load the ship down with, a depth, char with depth charges and the so sonar modules to track down enemy submarines. The goal is to make a cheap convoy escort that can be mass produced. So we see the convoy escort here and it has the depth charge amount of those custom slots uh and a, a one by the main battery slot uh nothing in a nothing in gunfire control uh looks like a sonar module no torpedoes in the engine and uh the cost looks like what 810 which is i don't know what that is in terms of the game right now but it's also very uh probably a lot cheaper than like your fleet destroyers and uh, also you can notice you see it looks a lot like the division designer mixed with the Stellaris uh, with the Stellaris uh, ship designer from you know Stellaris how many times how, how bungled can I say that uh, it looks like things will cost or will cost naval experience to make which we'll see how that is balanced out so moving on um, Continuing the example, however, Japan has been making aggressive noises recently and you expect to fight in the Pacific against enemy carrier battle groups. So you start with a more modern destroyer hull and add as much AA as it can carry to send it out to help Australia. So this one, you can tell, has a lot more modules. It does have torpedoes, does have gunfire and uh, radar as opposed to sonar. I don't know if those are going to be mutually exclusive or kind of both tie-in or what have you. But so you have a good radar module, a gunfire control, AA, better main battery, and then you fill two of the custom slots with AA. Um, carrying on. Unfortunately, you miscalculated, and the Japanese are running swarms of cheap disposable destroyers with lots of torpedoes and not much else, using their carriers in a defensive role to provide air cover. So you design a light cruiser with plenty of guns to annihilate that, the destroyer before they can do too much damage. It won't be cheap, but it'll give you the edge once it is in service. Somewhere along the line, you'll also want to build up a carrier battle group with two of your own, and that means you'll have to also look at cruiser and battleships or escorts as well as the carriers themselves. Thankfully you have a number of older battleships and cruisers lying around that could be given a second lease on life by refitting them. Details to come in future dev diaries. That is one I'm looking forward to. Almost more than the I don't know. I kind of am looking forward to refitting more than I am the new ships themselves. Although it kind of all times into the same thing. I wouldn't be surprised if refitting is very similar to the current or this uh, design system. So, pretty much, uh, they thought about making ship hulls have tonnage and module cost some tonnage. And at the end, basically, they decided that was going to make it too complicated. And uh, pretty much everything will just come down to production cost and combat stats. Um, and the ships, and so the system, it'll will allow you to build super ships with naval attack values that dwarf the values you can reach currently. Uh, they will not be cheap and will have some shortcomings. So you can build your super battleships, Yamato. No word yet on whether you can build space battleship Yamato. Um, but moving on. So, uh, one, so the current, the new system, it'll allow us to build a bunch of ship classes that community have been requesting a lot without having to add subtypes and therefore cluttering up that naval research screen. So a light carrier, you could build an escort carrier like the ones based off, like the Bogue in World of Warships, the ones that you saw in Taffy 3 in the battle, you know, battles around Leyte. Uh, you can build a light carrier by just having a carrier with fewer hangle, hangar modules and therefore it'll be considerably cheaper. So here we see HMS Hermes, which only has 
capacity for 20 aircraft but uh do we where's the where's the cost i don't see the cost on this screen anywhere uh you know i was only gonna it's not final of course but i was gonna compare it to the destroyers um and so yeah you can build escort carriers uh, what other ones? An anti-aircraft cruiser, you could just take a regular cruiser and choose to mount dual purpose main guns, which are worse than some other guns against surface targets, but they also allow, give you some A capabilities. Or you could build a seaplane carrier, which is a cruiser that dedicates most of its custom slots to airplane launchers, which gives it better surface detection and is pretty much bad at everything else. So, you know, you could have very specialized fleets with one scout ship instead of having all your ships do everything a little bit good you can have every ship super specialized and you know you only need one spotting ship if the rest of your ships have all the guns so um the example where they have the anti destroyer cruiser from the british one you know i picture even though it is an older ship like the st louis from world of warships the iron battleship just guns everywhere uh so there we go uh, and moving on, some ship types uh, that special, so for some nations and some ship types will have special hull types that will have special abilities. So you have the Panzerschiff, which is available to the Germans, of course. And it's a cruiser that you can mount a single battleship grade heavy battery module. So you can have your Deutschland class, your, you know, your Graf Spee and all of those. Uh, more battle cruisery, you know, your pocket battleships. Another one they're adding are Sweden and other Nordic countries get a special special coastal defense ship hull, which is slower than a regular cruiser, but can also mount battleship guns. Uh, and then another one they have added are German pre-dreadnoughts, but that is mostly a case of missing capabilities. Um, most of these are set at game start, but some are available at special awards for completing certain focuses. Focuses. I can't talk right now. I'm sorry. I'm feeling, you know, sinusy and all that. So if I sound weird or if I, you know, just chalk up any miscues on this video to that one. So, uh, special fur, special Fergus. <laughs> now I'm saying it unintentionally. Oh my God. Well, it was unintentional, but I'm, I can't help myself. Okay. U-boat effort. It looks like it uh, gives you a beast. Or, pff, I'm, I can't talk. A research bonus for submarine models and adds a technology for a cruiser submarine hull. So I guess that means you have a much better submarine or a bigger submarine that can do much more. I'd be interested to see if you can build the Japanese carrier submarines that can launch a handful of airplanes. Um, and so modules are, of course, uh, unlocked by researching technologies. A lot of them are in the new and revised naval tech tree, which isn't ready to be shown off yet. Hashtag blame Daniel. Uh, some are spread around other tech trees. So radar in the, you know, for your land-based radar. Also affect radar modules on your ships. Researching anti-air in the artillery tab. You know where you find your artillery and your anti-tank and rocket artillery. That Those unlock, researching down that tree, unlocks better AA guns for ships. Fire control computers are a side branch of mechanical or of the mechanical computing so where you get your research bonuses and encryption and decryption we've seen those in the streams those have been blank but we have seen the slots for those um, i think daniel might have actually moused over one and people were able to see what it was but if you were wondering what those blank boxes were when you're watching the stream so that what that's what they are so uh they list uh a brief a list of each module that are the modules that each ship type can have and uh the first time it mentions it in this list in these lists it tells you what it is so light hulls uh you get light batteries which provides some naval attack against other light ships higher two modules also have dual purpose capabilities to aa you have anti-air depth charges for anti-submarines torpedoes mine rails for laying mines mine sweeping gear for sweeping mines radar sonar and fire control systems uh there we go cruisers have light battery a light medium battery which is better at naval attack and armor penetrating uh which is better against light ships uh medium battery which is better you know more naval attack and armor piercing against heavy ships but is less effective against light ships aa depth charges torpedoes mine rails secondary batteries which gives you some attack against light ships uh particularly useful for heavy cruiser and battleships later modules 
models have dual purpose capability to also add AA value. I love this. I can't wait to make my like Bismarck types or, you know, if you ever played World of Warships, which uh, is an, uh, another game I spend a lot of time on on this channel, you'll know I love the secondary build of any ship that has one, which is mainly the German ships. I'm going to make so many secondary builds in Hearts of Iron 4. I don't care if it works well, it just for the flavor reasons I want to do it. Um, also, airplane launchers, which adds air surface and submarine detections. So this is launching your, you know, your scout planes. Armor, which, you know, makes damage coming at you less effective. Radar, sonar, fire control systems. Heavy hull, heavy hulls have heavy batteries, which gives you a tremendous amount of naval attack and armor piercing at the cost of speed. And it's pretty much useless against light ships. But you know what? If you hit them, I bet it'll do a lot of damage. Uh, secondary AA armor airplane radar fire control so you can see the cruisers are a lot more versatile than cruisers are of course as they are traditionally the halfway point between destroyers and battleships and then we go into carriers which carriers have deck space the more deck space you have the more uh, planes you have deck armor which is competes with deck space for slots um, so it adds you armor and HP at the cost of speed then there's AA, and then there's secondaries. So the Graf Zeppelin, which is a ship wargaming is meaning to add to World of Warships soon, is basically uh, the, the German principle behind the Graf Zeppelin was going to be they were going to use the airplane. It was going to be a commerce raider. They are going to use the airplanes to disable the escort ships, and then they were going to sail that ship up and use its immense secondary batteries to dispatch of all the convoy ships. So you could build a Graf Zeppelin in uh, Hearts of Iron 4 now. You know, they did have the Graf Zeppelin class in the German tech tree, but it's basically a German carrier. Whereas historically, what the Germans were gonna plan on using this carrier for was going to be for a very specific role. You were going to be able to do that with aircraft carriers. So even other examples like uh, the early American carriers, I think the Lexington had eight inch turrets, the same kind that you see on the Pensacola class. And they eventually took those off and switched it for A. But basically you had heavy cruiser guns on a battleship. I'm looking forward to secondary, uh, on a carrier, I mean. Uh, you. I'm looking forward to secondary batteries on carriers, uh, if you were not able to tell. Submarines, torpedoes, mines, radar, and snorkel, which is spelled very German of it, uh, it reduces visibility. And so, uh, as you can see, light holes can carry a lot of weight to provide defense against submarines, but can also be really good torpedo boats or A units. And uh, cruisers, as you can tell by the amount of slots they can have, are meant to be very flexible and fulfill a wide variety of roles. Pretty much anywhere from super heavy destroyers to uh, poor man capital ships to mine layers, torpedoes, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Battleships and battle cruisers are pretty much only separated by different armor schemes and not much else. Uh, but heavy armor being labor and resource intensive, uh, you can cut corners. So, uh, Carriers. Carriers are now more flexible in terms of size, ranging from carriers with a couple planes to you got super carriers with hundreds, with over a hundred planes, and uh, pretty much this is you know going to make it easier to get into the carrier game uh, for even smaller nations. So you know like what the current state of the world is uh, with uh, the United States and all of our Nimitz class carriers, we have more aircraft carriers than the rest of the world combined, and they're all humongous. Whereas most other countries just, you know, have a much smaller carriage to have one uh, and be able to accomplish it. So you'll be able to do that in Hearts of Iron. Say if you're Greece going for a Byzantium run and you want somewhat of a Mare Nostrum contender, you can build some escort carriers since your naval industry isn't going to nearly uh, stand a chance against the Italians or the British. Uh, submarines are pretty much the same, but with upgrades, they can, uh, you can make mine lane submarines that can lay as many mines as dedicated mine lane cruisers, but it'll cost a lot less and lower risk of detection. No word on the Japanese carrier subs. I'm thinking that's something they're going to add, and I'm hoping that's something they're going to add. If you're from Hearts of Iron, if you're from Paradox, and you're watching this video, one, I love you, two, add the Japanese carrier submarines. Uh, and so this, of course, this whole designer window is going to be part of the DLC. If you do not buy Man the Guns, if you just go with a free Ironclad update, uh, the old, you'll have the old naval tech tree and it'll unlock pre-scripted designs 
and you'll get the traditional uh, up variant upgrade screen that we are familiar with. And so uh, here we see a picture of a battleship. This looks like a super heavy type. Uh, looks like there are four main battery guns. I'm thinking that little cannon with the two is a secondary, some AA, and looks pretty good. And then there's a question mark in the unlock slot. I don't know what that question mark is going to be. I'm only noticing that now as I'm telling you this. Also, it looks, I don't know if there's a brand new design or what's being changed, but 50 XP, the numbers aren't final, so it doesn't matter. But you can also see there are the adjusters that tells you what type of naval terrain the ship will do well and poorly in. And uh, so one final thing that they mentioned, uh, assuming this designer works as well as it hope it does, they're considering expanding it to cover tanks and airplanes. Uh, they, you know, had this in mind while developing the back end of this system but they're concerned with you know overloading the players with too many choices because uh you know you might design new tank destroyers like all the time but whenever you know you design your navy that seems like something that's going to be very reactionary and very rare in terms of decision making since the quantities of ships you make versus the quantity of like tanks and planes you make are very different a, if you have 200 ships and hearts of iron, you have a almost unbeatable navy. If you have, you need tens of thousands of airplanes a lot of times. So uh, ships, since they take longer to build, they expect us to, you know, uh, have to design them less often, which is why they're doing that. So uh, that's all for this week. Next week, they will talk uh, about what we can do with older ships, so refits, and what you probably won't be able to build and why you probably won't be able to build min max battleships on the first day of the game i think that's going to talk about what modules go into more of the modules you can research uh as well as maybe something to do with naval doctrine like you have to unlock a couple of levels of naval doctrine to realize hey battleships suck we should stick with carriers and you know pretty much make battleships anti-air platforms so uh Let's uh, let's see. Let's go over the rejected tiles really quick, and then I'll close out. Rejected tiles. Playing with Lego ships. Who designs the designer? Basically made just to allow Sweden to have historically accurate fleet. See, I forgot to make a comment about that. Of course, the Nordic countries get a special ship type, and of course, it's highlighted in the dev diary. We don't know who else would have it, but there we go. This is a Panzerschliff. It schliffs Panzers. Does it really? I don't know. Aviation battleships are bad, and you shall. And you should feel bad. This radar nonsense will never work. Bet. What's wrong with my bloody ships today? The spirits of Emperor Wilhelm II and Sir John Fisher were consulted for this feature. We ship Iowa Musashi. Rip the torpedo battleship mana. 12-6-2018 to 7 2018 And the best ship design is Friendship. And... Counts of people who ask about doing this for tanks and airplanes without reading the dev diary so far, one. And that number has not changed since a few earlier in the day. Um, part of that may be because, you know, nighttime for Europe is like daytime, late afternoon for us in the States, so they haven't updated it. But those are the rejected titles. So I want to talk a lot about this. Uh, I'm not going to hold you for too long, but this is amazing. I love this. This is fantastic. I'm going to love just designing ships as they are, um, you know, building specialized fleets. One question I did have, and I think, I don't know, maybe this is going to be a non-issue, is uh, how are they going to deal with the current overcrowding for carrier things? So, if, you know, is it going to be four carriers in a fleet or task force? Because currently, in the current state of the game, the way things go, you only want four carriers per fleet, which leads to... Uh, otherwise, it'll be overcrowding. But if it's by task force, ah, uh, there's my squeaky chair. Y'all love my squeaky chair. Go sign up for Patreon so I can get a non-squeaky chair. That's the only reason you should give me money if you don't like the chair squeaking in the video. Nothing to do with your support for this content. But if you know, considering if they're task forces, you could have you could have Taffy three with a couple of light super light uh, carriers, you know, only four of them if they keep that system, and then a bunch of destroyer escorts and uh, anti-submarine ships, which would probably suffer greatly against the main battle fleet. Uh, the special ship designs, I think, are going to add a lot of national flavor. Uh, for, you know, Germany, they're adding the Panzerschliff. For Sweden, they're adding something no one cares about except the Paradox devs. I love you all. Your country's great. It makes great games. 
Japan, I could think of the, the Kitakami, so you could have a more torpedo -y torpedo cruisers, although I'm not sure if that'll just be, uh, if that will just be a design you could make. I don't know if that'll be a special. I would assume, since they don't want to redo the focus tree, that's going to be one that you're going to unlock. I'm interested to see what the cruiser submarine hull does. Maybe that, this does, this is an U-boat effort, U-boat effort, this is in the German, uh, National Focus Street, but I do want to see if we get our Japanese carrier submarines. I've mentioned that so much this time. But this will allow you to play very historically or make historical type decisions. Like we already mentioned the Graf Zeppelin. The Germans never finish it, but if you want a raiding carrier fleet, you have super heavily armored carriers that are super slow, but at the same time, have a lot of armor and secondary batteries. You can just roll up your carriers to the enemy convoys, sink their escorts with the airplanes, and then sail up and like, hey, surrender or we're going to shoot you with our many secondary guns. You can have secondary build ships, which, you know, if you can't afford to build too many ships, you can just have your battleships be, or, and your cruisers be fairly self-sufficient. Uh, I'm also picturing, you know, you can have your later American battleship designs where, yeah, you know, your main battery, you never, the Americans never challenged the Japanese 18.1 inches stuck with our 16 inch guns, but load those ships up with the five inch of freedom secondary batteries that I love so much in World of War ships and, you know, have great AA and great secondary battery capabilities. I'm definitely looking forward to destroyers having dual purpose armaments, um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm I just. I love naval warfare. My grandfather served on the Enterprise. If you haven't heard that before, welcome to the channel. If you have heard that before, welcome to your second video. And that's just going to be amazing. Like I, I, I can't wait. This is going to be so great. This is going to be. I, I'm going to enjoy. I'm going to spend a lot of time just looking at all this. I don't know. I hope it's balanced or situational enough where it's not going to be like Stellaris where it's like, oh, build this fleet and you'll be good. I will definitely use this to role play as much as possible and hopefully all of you will as well. So, I mean, I could just, I'm, I'm just thinking of so many different things like, you know, you could have your, um, and it, you could definitely create, say, much more squeaky chair I, I, I saw something on the ground i had to pick it up but um this uh, adds a lot more uh variability between nations and their navies you can customize a lot more this mixed with the naval terrain mixed with the task force system it's going to be a lot of fun the naval game is going to be maybe not as important because you know you gotta get your troops on the ground and uh, if you're France, the naval game doesn't really matter when Germany can just walk across Belgium to get to you. But, you know, they're fixing America and Japan, and uh, they recently uh, fixed Japan and Waking the Tiger. And uh, they're also, so with uh, Man the Guns, they're, you know, doing the focus sheet for America and the UK, two naval superpowers. So it'll be interesting to see how these play in with those nations. I'm looking forward to hearing more about this, especially the uh, the refit uh, the thingy, the refit system. Because if I feel like if you are a smaller nation, or no matter who you are, even if you're a larger nation, you're going to. And they also mentioned the reserve fleets earlier. So um, are we going to have something like the uh, conversion where you can make your older like your light tank twos, you can uh, refit your light tank twos into your self-propelled gun based off of light tank threes. You know, if you can do stuff like that, um, I forgot the exact term for it in game, but if you can do those with ships and, uh, you know, better manage your navy and make your navy more efficient, more specialized, and in my opinion, a lot more cool. I rambled on a lot. Let me know what you think in the comments. Let's get a discussion started. I'd ha be happy to discuss with you and just fanboy over, you know, World War II naval warfare, which is the peak of naval warfare, if you ask me. Um, I feel like that's a fairly safe thing to say. My grandfather will have his Enterprise, and I will make it fantastic. Maybe not historical. I am going to overbuild the crap out of some of these ships, and we're going to have a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed this overview. Uh, if you want to read it for yourself, that link is down in 
the description. I am actually getting that link right now so I don't forget. And yeah, that's it for this Dev Diary overview. Uh, uh, pretty long, uh, just about to the 30 minute mark and hope you enjoyed this overview. If you did and you're new to the channel and you haven't done so already, be sure to leave a like, consider subscribing to the channel, follow me on Twitter, and check out my Patreon page. Thank you all so much for watching and until the next one, this is Mikey Dare Panginator signing out. See ya nerds.